Way back in 2015, Phil Lord and Christopher Miller were announced as the directors of the Han Solo origin movie. Rumours of a Solo Solo movie <laughs> had been circulating since Disney bought Lucasfilm back in 2012, but the project was never really something fans wanted. For pretty much most audiences, Harrison Ford is Han Solo, so the prospect of seeing that guy that was in Hail Caesar for five minutes wasn't exactly thrilling. Your line, just say it as I said. Say your line exactly as I'm about to, just as I'm about to do. Sure, okay. Would the detour so simple? Ooh. Would the detour so simple? For us, however, the fact that Lord and Miller were attached gave us ample cause to be cautiously optimistic about the project. But then this happened. Lord and Miller being fired was the last straw for many fans who went from being barely hyped in the first place to actively hating the movie's existence. Obviously Lord and Miller's involvement didn't provoke the same reaction as, say, someone like Edgar Wright directing Ant-Man. But let's not forget that they have consistently given us movies that no one would ever have wanted, greenlit out of a soulless need to cash in on an existing property, and still made them great. In fact, it's their USP. <laughs> Lord and Miller are just as guilty as pretty much everyone else in Hollywood for making sequels, remakes or brand heavy movies, but they do it so well that they make us feel like what we're watching is something brand new. When the Lego movie was first announced back in 2012, it received a similar response to the Han Solo movie, and it's easy to see why. Like stinkers such as Battleship and the Emoji Movie, the concept of a film based entirely on an inanimate object sounded ever so slightly like a cash-in. Would you like to play Capitalism? In being based on a toy rather than a narrative, the Lego Movie doesn't come with a pre-packaged story. On paper, it's literally the result of a crude marketing campaign. However, what makes the Lego Movie different is that Lord and Miller are aware of this. Let's look at Battleship. The board game is based on eliminating all your friends off the board, so it obviously makes sense that the film would be about Michael Bay Light, Transformers-esque robotic aliens taking over the world, whilst that bargain bin action hero who cannot catch a break in Hollywood fights them off. In contrast, the Lego Movie stays true to its source material by deriving its narrative from the experience of playing with Lego. Lord and Miller understand that the important thing about this movie is translating the experience of playing with Lego into its narrative, and this underpins the core moral of the film, that creativity is more important than following instructions. Lord and Miller take the brand and all its sub-brands and turns it into effective world building. Time and time again, Lord and Miller bring us back to the brand, not for the purposes of advertising, but more to elicit an emotional response from the viewer and remind parents and children alike why LEGO is so great. The difference between this kind of branding and something like the Emoji Movie is that the LEGO Movie is rooted in nostalgia. Whilst Sony are literally using the Emoji Movie to sell us on apps that we have never heard of because they haven't come out yet, the LEGO Movie doesn't want to sell us anything. It wants to remind us why that thing our parents bought us when we were children is still good. Uh, we wanted to tell a real story and we felt like um, that was the only way this thing was going to hang together. We, we wanted to make a movie that felt like an eight-year-old made it up. Um, <laughs> but we thought you would get really sleepy uh, if uh, the story didn't um, really grab you. Similarly, Lord and Miller's 21 Jump Street is a reboot of a franchise that no one cares about in the first place. It's almost like taking a franchise that has had its day and making it years later may not be the best recipe for success. Like the Lego Movie, however, Lord and Miller are aware of this and use the inherent lameness of the premise to both parody the original and create a new franchise in its own right. The film routinely pokes fun at the fact that it shouldn't work. At the same time, Lord and Miller clearly love the source material, despite it being a bit dated, and successfully transport it into the 21st century. Like the Lego Movie, the characters are a product of their source material, and the main tension comes from the fact that they're relics from a bygone age, just like the original show, and this drives the majority of conflict. Both characters are tested by the fact that what they once knew about high school no longer applies, and this parallels the fact that a show like Jump Street is no longer cool like when it was when Lord and Miller were younger. 
Because Lord and Miller know that there is barely any affinity for the previous canon, they bring back the original team in a small cameo and then kill them almost immediately. They know that audiences are there largely for Tatum and Hill, and aren't one of the five fans who went to see a faithful remake of the original series. This gives them the freedom to bend their source material, and in doing this they give us a movie that no one wanted, but that we all wanted to see. The sequel, 22 Jump Street, doubles down on this idea of subverting our expectations. We know that sequels are extremely played out, and so Lord and Miller brazenly point this out to us time and time again. No more so than in the last 10 minutes, where they give us over 40 sequel pitches in rapid succession. Foreign exchange students. Awesome. Yes. In Russia. What? That's be done, you. Vodka soda. Next assignment, a semester at sea. They know that the possibility that sequels can easily become creatively bankrupt isn't enough. They need to take it to another level of insanity. Lord and Miller's previous filmography more than proves their purchase for taking what shouldn't work and making it a hit, so it's a shame we'll never get to see their vision for Han Solo. Will Ron Howard's Solo A Star Wars Story be good? Well, we don't know for sure. What we do know is that a considerable portion of the movie has been reshot and repurposed, with Lord and Miller now only receiving an executive producer credit each for their contributions. There's no doubt that the movie will make buck at the box office, but if you didn't want it in the first place, Lord and Miller are no longer going to be present to convince you otherwise. <coughs> If you'd like to see more from Full Fat videos, please check out our channel, and why not check out our Facebook and Instagram pages for all the latest updates. Until next week, stay milky.